There's often a benefit in operating reactors in a way that deviates from our three ideal reactor systems. One example of this is the semi-batch reactor. The semi-batch reactor we consider to be a tank reactor with a stream either added or removed continuously. So it might look something like this, where we have a stirred tank reactor with just a flow stream in, but no outlet. So why might we want to do this? So imagine we have two species A and B that react through two parallel pathways, forming a desired product and an undesired product. So we can write A plus B going to some desired product uh, D, and the rate expression for this um, reaction depends on the concentration of A squared and the concentration of B. And there's a parallel pathway a plus B combining to form an undesired product U. And the rate of this reaction depends on the concentration of A and the concentration of B squared. So the instantaneous selectivity is given by the ratio of the rates of these two reactions. So the selectivity at any time of the desired versus the undesired uh, pathway would depend on the relative rate constants of the two pathways times the concentration of A divided by the concentration of B. So you can see that the selectivity is maximized by keeping the concentration of B low and the concentration of A high. So we could accomplish this using a semi-batch reactor which we charge with pure A. So this has some concentration CA naught, and then we continuously add B to this. So we have a inlet volumetric flow rate that's just pure B. Other common applications of a semi-batch reactor include controlling heat generation if we have a strongly exothermic reaction, uh, reactive distillation where volatile products are continuously removed from our reactor, or a system where one reactant is say a sparingly soluble gas so we continuously bubble it through a liquid in the reactor. So let's see a mole balance for a reaction A plus B going to C. Operating in a semi-batch reactor that's charged initially with pure A to which a stream of pure B is added. So our mole balance on A starting in the general form is going to be the inlet molar flow rate of A minus the outlet molar flow rate of A plus the rate of generation of A within the reactor volume is equal to the accumulation of moles of A with time. Now in this case we're uh, again assuming the reactor is well mixed, spatially uniform, and so since we don't have any A being added to the system with time or removed from the system with time, those flow terms are zero. So we can solve the problem using concentration or conversion. So using concentration here, we can write that the rate of reaction times the reactor volume is equal to the derivative of the number of moles of A, which we can write the concentration times the reactor volume with respect to time. So note here that the volume we can't pull out of this time derivative since the volume is going to be uh, a function of time as we're adding um, material to our reactor. So if we have constant density, for example, we could write that the volume would be equal to some initial volume plus the volumetric flow rate with which we're feeding B to the reactor times the time. So now we can write our expression out so we can um, work out this time derivative so we'll have two terms now the volume times the derivative of concentration of A with respect to time plus the concentration of A at any time t times the derivative of volume with respect to time. So we can write a final differential equation for A so dCA dt is equal to 
the rate of formation of A minus the inlet volumetric flow rate that we're feeding to the reactor divided by the reactor volume times concentration of A. So we can see here that there are two terms that lower the concentration of A in the reactor. One is a uh, rate of consumption of A. So A is being um, converted to C by reaction with B. And B A is also being diluted as B is added to the reactor. So we can also write a mole balance on B. So again, we can start with the general form that the inlet molar flow rate of B minus the outlet molar flow rate of B plus the rate of formation of B within the reactor volume is equal to its accumulation with time. So here we do have a flow in term, so we are continuously adding B to our semi-batch reactor, but there's no uh, B being removed, so that outflow term is equal to zero. So we can write that Fb0 plus Rbv is equal to Again, we're going to work out this uh, time derivative uh, with respect to both volume and concentration. So this will be the reactor volume times the time derivative of the concentration of B plus concentration of B times the derivative of volume with respect to time. So again, we can finalize our differential equation for the change in concentration of B with respect to time within the reactor. This is equal to the rate of formation of B, so this is gonna again be a negative value, plus the inlet volumetric flow rate times the difference between the initial concentration of B and the concentration at any time, divided by the reactor volume. So these are uh, a coupled set of differential equations, which we can solve uh, using our favorite ordinary differential equation solver.